competing in the age of AI, yeah, how businesses should maybe think about as they go more and more in the world of technology, um, what are the things they should keep in mind? Um, I think this can be a wonderful article to close our interaction uh, because the future is going to be technology driven. And we did speak about artificial intelligence in one of our sessions. So I thought uh, this will uh, complement what we already discussed. Um, so let's see what we can learn um, from, from this very interesting articles um, uh, and how we should reconsider uh, the rules of engagement, rules of businesses, international businesses, uh, or local businesses. Uh, uh, the way you want to think about that. In 2019, just five years ago, the uh, after the Ant Financial Services Group was launched, and this is a very interesting example, so pay attention. The number of consumers using its services passed the 1 billion mark. Just five years after, 1 billion mark. Yeah, so can you think about the, you know, uh, scale of business? Spun out of Alibaba and financial financial uses artificial intelligence and data from Alipay, its core mobile payment platform. And if you are not familiar with Alibaba and Alipay, uh, you should, as as a participant of international business management, Alibaba uh, is quite a phenomenal company originating from uh, uh, from uh, China. And you should also uh, read about. Uh, his CEO and uh, his struggles and his life and uh, those type of things. Uh, run some Google searches and uh, spend some time on that. To run an extraordinary variety of businesses, including consumer lending, money market funds, wealth management, health insurance, credit rating services, and even an online game that encourages people to reduce their carbon footprint. The company serves more than 10 times as many customers as the largest U.S. banks. If you compare this company with U.S. banks, it's 10 times more as many customers as the largest U.S. banks. You can imagine the, the big scale of, of this business with less than one tenth the number of <laughs> employees. So the more consumers, but less than one tenth the number of employees. If a US bank has 100 workers, big one, they are going to have 10. And with 1 billion mark surpassed consumers, just five years. Yeah, very interesting example to look, to think about. Uh, at its last round of funding in 2018, it had a valuation of 150 billion USD, 150 billion USD, almost half that of JP Morgan Chase, the world's most valuable financial service company. So just give you a, you know, just what is 150 billion? What is 150 billion? So GDP Jamaica, yeah. Well, nothing against our, our, our beautiful country, but this is the GDP of whole country round it off upward 17 billion yeah sam call it 20 billion yeah 20 billion yeah compared and what is the number here 150 billion so spend some time to reflect on this yeah how this how this happened what is what are the things behind happening yeah and not in in a lot of time also a yeah, very short period of time yeah, very short period of time, 2019, five years, passing 1 billion. And then, you know, the, the way they are operating, they are very like efficiently. How that is possible? One tenth the number of employees compared to some large US banks. Yeah, so please reflect on this example. Unlike traditional banks, investment institutions and insurance companies aren't financial is built on a digital core and that is the reason of you know discussing this so as we 
learn more about international businesses we want to think what are the things we can learn uh, to improve the digital core or infrastructures of our international businesses there are no workers in its critical part of operating activities ai runs the show there is no manager approving loans please reflect please reflect very important yes no employee providing financial advice no representative authorizing consumer medical expenses and without the operating constraints the limit traditional firms uh, that limit traditional firms aren't financial can compete in unprecedented ways and achieve unbridled growth and impact across a variety of industries yeah so this is this is if you have a manager approving loans if you have employees giving financial advice to the customers and so on this type of thing it's, it's these are things of past it's not uh, need to move on to more interesting things the age of ai is being ushered in by the emergence of this new kind of firm our financial cohort includes giants like google facebook alibaba tencent tencent again very interesting company if you are not familiar please run search it on it great company um, and many smaller rapidly growing firms which which firm uh, operates uh, tiktok tiktok doing d o u y i n doing.com check this company also yeah yeah doing pretty well yeah doing.com and many many smaller rapidly growing firms from zebra medical vision and wayfair to indigo and ocado ocado check out all these companies every time we use a service from one of these companies the same remarkable thing happens rather than replying on traditional business processes operated by workers managers process engineers supervisors or customer service representatives the value we get is served up by algorithms the future is all about algorithms all these things are run on algorithms like tiktok is run on algorithm facebook algorithm it's not people who are managing it all the time it's algorithm automated type of services yeah microsoft uh, ceo Sat satya refers to ai as the new run time of the firm yeah should read on the life of honorable satya yeah is the ceo of microsoft true managers and engineers design the ai and the software that makes the algorithm work but after that the system delivers value on its own through digital automation or by leveraging an ecosystem of providers outside uh, the firm yeah on its own yeah this is very important delivering value on its own like you know people who make money online uh, like through um, uh, not just money because not all apps generate money for you they generate other things also opportunities Oppor they are gen like tiktok is not maybe going to give you money like like youtube would but tiktok would help you grow opportunities yeah so you are you are but you know value on its own that is like people who make money like uh, through like these online streams and stuff so they it is on the same system like on a, on a in a traditional work environment you work 9 to 9 to 9 to 5 8 to 5 8 to 4 9 to 9 to 4 whatever is the time yeah so you have to go there and work but these mediums if you want to earn money from them you can keep on 
uh, earning money from them even in your sleep like you know active income and passive income those type of concepts so they are is no matter you are talking about personal income generation or generating in income for your international businesses it's think you need to think about some models which where the value is created on its own of course you need to put a lot of effort in it you need to make the things and in the initial years of course it is quite 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 difficult uh, and let me just go to this picture um, so in the initial years this is what the model is model is how ai driven companies can outstrip traditional firms so in the beginning is not too much because you are dependent on number of users as more and more users increase the viewing increase the information you have your data increases in numbers and then you surpass the sky is the limit if you have your ai algorithms done in the correct way but with traditional operating models you will have to you know it's going to um, you must have read those uh, those type of you know models like where the now the growth especially in marketing courses i think in basic marketing course you read about those things like the product is saturated so now uh, you would um, want to you know it has maximized so then now you would rearrange your marketing campaign or maybe put some other flavors in the in the in the product to get more customers consumers and then you will try to up this curve up here so it will but still it would have this type of shape but with with technology it is this type of red line going up because it's dependent on data and data just keeps on keeps on uh, improving like it's just like google searches google searches will keep on google will keep on giving us better results for the searches uh, and that is what has been happening over the years because the number of people are putting more and more data to find searches online so that just yes, that mechanism alone more and more searches are just going to improve the algorithms of google so with time it is going to even give us better results and if you pay attention you will you will see that few years ago the when you will be typing something it will not give you like uh, auto auto uh, correction like uh, find the see these are this is it is giving me some it is giving me some options like find the area find the song find the slope find the area of find the invisible cow how it is it's not going to give you if you try the same search like if try typing the same thing in your browser google right find the it is not going to give you the same uh, things they are looking at my past behavior like find the coaching in criticism because i was maybe looking at that or something like that so how it is just going to improve over a period of time uh, because more and more data is going to um, be fed up in the in the algorithms through digital automation or by leveraging an ecosystem or providers outside the firm ai sets the prices on amazon yeah. prices are set by algorithms recommend song on spotify matches buyers and sellers on indigo indigo's marketplace and qualifies borrowers for an and financial loan so it is not the so what it really means is that of course in a bank some human beings are going to be there it's not saying that everything is done automated as we speak but the, a lot of work is done automate on using algorithms and then maybe some selections will be will be made and then from there human beings can now see look at those selections and then finalize their uh, their things yeah the the element elimination of traditional constraints uh, transforms the rules of competition yeah. so traditional things you have already studied in your various courses and even if you will open the book of international business you are going to read about traditional things but what i am trying to say here is that that is not how 
the future or when you guys are ready to be part of working world that is not how you should be thinking about traditional ha tradition have their own advantages it is good to know them but it's time to think about new ideas yeah so you can be a good part of any business you are going to be part of as digital networks and algorithms are woven into the fabric of firms industries begin to function differently and the lines between them blur the changes extend well beyond born digital firms as more traditional organizations confronted by new rivals move towards ai based models too and these are very good examples now run some searches on them and learn more about them so for example walmart is competing with one of the competition is you can say amazon fidelity honeywell comcast yeah are now tapping extensively into data algorithms and digital networks to compete convincingly in this new era yeah which you and me are going to be part of whether you are leading a digital startup or working to revamp a traditional enterprise it's essential to understand the re revolutionary impact ai has on operations strategy and competition pay attention to revolutionary yeah. and then think about this early example which we spoke about yeah and financial service 150 billion us devaluation in a very short period of time look at the growth of amazon in just like when which year amazon started which year amazon started i don't remember but you should remember these type of things which year 94 94 it was or 2003 yeah 94 5th july okay how many years 2026 20, 2027 20, 27 years ago 20 26 27 27 years ago what is what is that time 20 what is 27 years you are going to be 27 very soon before you know yeah in in 27 years he is the business has gone from where to where from from nothing from founding to where it is now operating income <laughs> 23 billion revenue is 387 billion yeah in in how many in how many years it's 27 years it's no time if you think about it 27 years that is why it is very important to think about these things and start something today if you start something today and not not saying everyone is going to be as successful as honorable bezos but anything can happen uh, you never know until you until you try but 27 years is the time if you think about it <laughs> not even 30 not even 30 very clearly not even 30 and in that 27 year if the business went through the times of covid where businesses covid broke down the backbone of businesses people went out of the business bank bankrupt yeah countries went down countries nations went down yeah they are saying countries might not be able to you know come out of the economic impact in 10 years 12 years 15 years very easily see what happened in india it's like on on her knees how many people lost their life yeah more in us but us was had a lot of money how much money us injected to recover uh the economy trillions of not billions trillions of usd yeah because they had the money but other countries uh, you can see the impact of 
COVID-19 in, in, on our economy, local economy also. So, but in this time, what, how did, what Amazon, Amazon revenues grow, grow, grow. There's a growth, growth. And if you are following the, the business, you would see that when COVID-19 came, I was reading some uh, articles and I learned that Honorable Jeff Bezos, he decided that he will stop other things and he will focus on this aspect of Amazon that how to grow in this in this time COVID-19 is here in the early days it was just coming in we were still having uh, face to face sessions it was before we went online on our campus so what he was thinking about these yeah I remember discussing this in my I think first <laughs> first live live class or some second in first week I remember discussing this yeah so and you can see the results they are they the when the when majority of the business in the world they are losing their business amazon is one business which which grew by multi multifold multifold many other businesses are also also there so this is the context in which we would like to discuss what we want to discuss today ai factory at the core of the new big firm is a decision factory what we call the AI factory. Its software runs the millions of daily ad auctions at Google and Beidou. Its algorithm decides which cars often ride, offer rides on Didi, Grab, Lyft, Uber. Yeah, read about these companies. Would not have time to discuss them individually, but a wonderful wonderful businesses how what is the business model how they operate what challenges they face how they overcome challenges these things are available online it's not secret of course there would be some things which company is not going to disclose but if you just read the things which are available that it's quite a lot of information and then use it in whatever you are doing try to experiment and see if you can learn something from from what they do it sets the prices of headphones and polo shirts on amazon and runs the robots that clean floors in some walmart location it enables customer service bot set fidelity and interprets x-rays at zebra medical yeah we were talking about um, i don't think in with you guys but we were talking about somewhere that uh, you know, job description, the jobs which, which are getting disrupted, like reading, interpreting, not just reading, interpreting X-rays is something which, you know, doctors would, would do. But now uh, machines are being used, which would, uh, bots are being used, which are going to, you know, see the X-ray and they can read in many ways. They can read it faster in many ways. They can even read better what what a human eye can miss maybe the bot is not going to miss and and maybe if if it is the case that maybe bot is making some mistake as more and more data is going to come just like i showed you in this picture as more and more data is going to come the technology is going to improve so the reading maybe in the beginning is not going to be as good as traditional doctor which is here maybe in the but as more and more it reads more and more and more it's going to become better and better and better yeah so there is no limit of learning with these technologies in each case the ai factory treats the cn making as a science this is beautiful line if you just reflect on this it's a beautiful line ai factory treats decision making as a science when you make decisions in your life is it a science or is it your likability and your intuition and your gut feeling and what you feel like and those type of things like decision making is is a is I'm not discounting the benefits of, you know, gut feeling and intuition and those things. Some people can have very good intuition also, but think about it. It's 
need to somewhere along the lines you need to make your decisions based on like some scientific principles not just gut feeling and what you are feeling like and those type of things a very beautiful line analytics systematically convert internal and external data into predictions insights and choices which in turn guide and automate operational workflows oddly enough and this is very interesting paragraph uh, pay attention the ai that can drive the explosive growth of a digital firm often is not even all that sophisticated we are not talking about sophisticated ai the type of things which you and me watch in the movies and all these things which companies are doing they are not strong ai they are weak ai weak ai to bring about dramatic changes ai does not need to be the stuff of science fiction indistinguishable from human behavior or simulating human reasoning a capability sometimes referred to as strong ai it's not that what you need you need only a computer system to be able to perform tasks traditionally handled by people what is often referred to as weak ai so with weak ai you can gain the advantages which we spoke about in the introductory part today with weak ai the ai factory can already take on a range of critical decisions in some cases it might manage information businesses such as google and facebook in other cases it will guide how the company builds delivers or operates actual physical products like amazon's warehouse robots google self service self driving car services etc but in all cases digital decision factories handle some of the most critical processes and operating decisions software makes up the core of the firm while humans are moved to to the edge that's why if you don't build the capabilities capacities which are going to be useful for the future then you and me will also be moved to the edge it's not just the businesses we will also be yeah four components are essential to every factory the first is the data pipeline the semi automated process that gathers cleans integrates and safeguards data in a systematic sustainable and scalable way this is very important yeah so you need to learn something about data before you uh, graduate spend some time do some courses build some skills alongside the areas of gathering data cleaning data integrating data safeguarding security data security anything yeah these are the four options which this article gives you because no matter which field you are going to go it irrespective of which industry is going to be dependent on data there are people who are working on data looking at numbers different types of numbers they have to gather data they have to clean it they have to integrate it they have to safeguard it all companies even as we speak now can you name any company which do, does not gather or clean or integrate or safeguard data please name one company in the world which does not have no data at all there's no company and then in the future because you are going to incorporate technologies then you have to build these type of systems it's a possibility that you know a company might not have compiled the data they would have data but it would be in the intuition of the ceo he would from his memory he will maybe remember things or they have the data in the in like paperwork and they have not put it in some system that is possible that's possible like there are different countries in the world not all are you know is a digital divide is a true thing yeah so you and me might have internet all the time and we cannot live without internet but run some google search is how how many people have internet access in the world how many people have internet access how many 
people have internet access in the world very few i think not many 4.6 billion and what is the what is the what is the total population it's like 7 billion something like that so a lot of people don't even have internet yeah and even this number seems a little high to me to be honest but let's stick with this no problem they are easily 2.5 billion people who don't have internet at all they don't and all from these 2.66 these people does not mean that they have internet all the time no it's not that so it's just that they can use data and many people would just use it for a very brief period of time depending on where they are yeah so if you if you if you are someone who have data all the time on your phone or somewhere you are you can call yourself privileged it's not everyone have that type of facility the second is algorithms which generate predictions about future states or actions of the business, like some type of forecasting. The third is an experimentation platform on which hypotheses regarding new algorithms are tested to ensure that their suggestions are having the intended effect. It is just like uh, prototypes, any product service, you run it a little bit in the test group, see, you know, if people are liking it, what are the problems issues and so on and the fourth is infrastructure the system that embed this process in software and connect it to internal and external users take a search engine like google or bing as soon as someone starts to type a few letters into the search box algorithms dynamically predict the full search item on the basis of terms that many users have typed in before yeah it's built on what people have searched before and this particular user's past actions these so that is this, if you look carefully to this line carefully it won't be hard for you to agree that these companies are storing our data in some way or format it's not it's not a rocket science you should agree because how then they are able to you know predict like give us the complete sentence i just showed you an example a while ago and you can run on your googles also i'm sure you are familiar with this like it's it's called i think autocomplete on your phones also autocomplete happens like how that is so some this data is going somewhere yeah. somewhere someone is looking at these things these predictions are captured in a drop down menu that helps the user zero in quickly on the relevant search every keystroke and every click are captured as data points and every data point improves the prediction of our future searches okay very good i did not think that they will be so straightforward but this is the line every keystroke and every click are captured as data points they have told themselves yeah, what does that mean what what that means about your privacy yeah. ai also generates the organic search results which are drawn from a previously assembled index of the web and optimized according to the clicks generated on the results of the previous search the entry of the term also sets off an automated auction for the ads most relevant to the user search, the results of which are shaped by additional experimentation and learning loop, any click on or away from the search query or search results page provides useful data. This is, I find this interesting, not just click on, also away, if you don't click. So everything is being captured, you click, or you don't click and move away if you move away that is also captured interesting the more searches the better the predictions and the better the predictions the bad more the search and engine is used yeah. more searches 
better prediction why because the data is growing so on the long run that is why uh, these companies are able to understand the consumer in a better way they might make mistakes in the early days but as the user in interacts more with their platforms because they are capturing every movement every keystroke every click on or away they are capturing everything so they will get an understanding of it is just like you know if you come in my browser's history you will understand what type of person i am yeah. it's not it's not hard yeah you will understand if you if you can get access to like call it like a a weeks my one weeks search history you will know what 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 are what do i search in the morning what i what do i search in the nights what type of person i am what is my liking what is so it's very easy but what is not is not hard to understand well it is hard because you know human beings are difficult people to understand we don't really understand <laughs> we understand but then we don't understand but um, you can have some ideas like you can have decent ideas about a person uh, so they have the data of all the like all the points all the touch points since you started putting in using google they have all the history just looking at a week's history browsing history you can learn a lot if you have if if and they have my all of my history all of like they know that they can take out 5 6 7 10 themes that these are the things which he is looking for these are the 10 major things they they won't be wrong in that they can be they won't be wrong they would know my preferences they will know like they might even know me more than i know myself to be honest because now that data if they make it if some psychologist psychiatrist evaluate that data who have who understand human psyche and behaviors and they have the my like one years of google searches my god they really going to know me inside out <laughs> so that is that is why these companies are making money that is why 1 billion consumer surpass in the example we gave that is why what how much was the what was this what 150 billion this 150 billion is possible because of having that type of understanding about your customer then your customer is why the customer is going to go away to a, to a traditional so what i am trying to say that tra traditional models need to slowly 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 but surely we need to slowly walk away from them walking away not not like disregarding them but uh, anyways removing limits to scale scope and learning and this is where your international business comes because you you need to need to do these things in your international business scale scope and learning the concept of scale has been central in business science at least uh, the rev industrial revolution which you guys are familiar about you should read about it maybe you, i'm sure you know about it but reading is something else i'm sure you know what is industrial revolution but maybe you have not read a book on industrial revolution yet which is very likely that you have not you maybe read a couple of lines or something in your some class that is not enough because we are going through revolution right now and this is technology revolution so you need to read about industrial revolution like a book find some nice book on it you can that's not difficult go on online look at people's recommendation the book which is recommended by a lot of readers and you can see their comments and then find some book and you don't have to buy anything buy some free copy like a book which is also available online free and scan through it read like what was happening at that time what were people saying what people saying that yes this revolution is going to happen like for example 
how these Ford Ford is a company Henry Ford read about that company in detail like how that how that really how really how did that how it happened what was his structure what was he doing unconventional at that time why he was doing it those type of things and then so that will help you to think outside of the you know uh, regular thinking in current times uh, I think you should you should do it the great uh, Alf Alfred described how modern industrial firms could reach unprecedented levels of production at much lower unit cost giving large firms an important edge over smaller rivals he also highlighted the benefits companies could reap from the ability to achieve greater production scope or variety the push for improvement and innovation added a third requirement for firms and that third requirement is is learning yeah, learning and learning is you know even if you if you speak with some doctor like some some good doctor and ask them is uh, just when you visit the doctor next time for i hope you never have to but <laughs> when you see some doctor you know just ask them you know is your learning stopped you are a doctor now and they will tell you that their learning is not stopping their learning is not stopping the new and new and new things are coming continuously if they are a good doctor if they are like complacent and they are they have reached where they are and they say all right no problem i will just i will just um, live with what i know already uh, then maybe they will survive in a in a in a in a in a market like we have here you can open some small place and do something but we are talking about internationalization so if a doctor really want to you know uh, be be known in the outer world you will have to like every country's countries have their own tests even if you are a doctor you are going to some other country you will have to take your own different tests and then you know even if you are a specialist you have to continuously you know learn and those type of things you have to do so same is same is the principle for it. It's, if if it is a person who want to grow or if it is a business who want to grow or internationalize this learning thing is extremely important because what you are learning today is tomorrow some new thing is going to come and then day after tomorrow is something new going to come yeah so think about these things after hundreds of years of incremental improvements to the industry model the digital firm is now radically changing the scale scope and learning paradigms yeah, very interesting ai driven processes can be scaled up much more rapidly than traditional processes can allow for much greater scope because they can easily be connected with other, other digital businesses and create incredibly powerful opportunities for learning and improvement like the ability to produce even more accurate and sophisticated customer behavior models and then tailor services accordingly and this is true in anything you know, powerful you know connections connected powerful opportunities for learning uh, anything you want to learn like you know online you put a search on any topic you want to learn about whatever it's going to give you youtube is going to give you you know videos showing you how they did it <laughs> yeah this time was this was not available to 100 years ago even a king of a country could not dream of a of this life which an ordinary person a regular person like you and me have the things we have in our life the king could not think about 100 years ago yeah you go back 200 years ago and <laughs> even but 100 years is good enough yeah so what what next 100 years is going to bring what business you can start today which you know next in the next 100 years it is going to become something phenomenal what or it will stay or it's or next 50 years it will stay and it will generate its own income from from that what you can what you can think of yeah so the, this is something you should 
should think about and you won't be not everyone will be successful but being successful is not the point the point is that you try and see if what happens and even if you are not successful you will have some type of experience from that in traditional operating models scale inevitably reaches a point at which it delivers diminishing returns uh, but we don't necessarily see this with ai driven models in which the return on scale can continue to climb to previously unheard uh, of levels and i showed you the picture a couple of times uh, which will come uh, later on so you can read the details and stuff like that the emergence of completely different kind of firm this is what what is happening yeah and they can fundamentally alter industries and reshape the nature of competitive advantage so you are familiar with competitive advantage in your courses like basic courses in economics but that competitive advantage which you are which you are familiar with that is going to be reshaped definitely yeah so you need to think about these things um other details here you can read in your in your own time i think i'm giving some examples and stuff like that uh, collision between ai driven and traditional firms are happening across industries across industries yeah across software financial services retail telecom media healthcare automobiles and even agri business in the last uh, ai article we looked at um, they gave example of agri business if you can recall it's hard to think of a business that is not facing the pressing need to digitize its operating model and respond to the new threats respond to the new threats so these are threats these are challenges how to overcome them how these other companies over overcome them what did they do not everyone will be successful but what did they do so learn from other people's success and more from other people's mistakes so you don't have you don't repeat those same mistakes again rebuilding traditional enterprise for leaders of traditional firms competing with digital rivals involves more than deploying enterprise software or even building data pipelines understanding algorithm and experimenting and these are the things they were talking about before but the authors are saying that that is not enough and what it requires is re-architecting the firm's organization and operating models this is what it is. so re-architecting the firm's organization and organizational models operating how the firm is being operated what is the model so you would have to actively find out the companies which are doing good and then look at their models look at their structures and those type of things the things you have read in organizational structure or organizational models or development type of you know courses and stuff like that if the things are important but that's not the that's not how a modern looking business which has the potential to go in overseas market and be successful those businesses are not they don't have those type of uh, models and structures they don't yeah um, while the transition to an ai driven model is challenging many traditional firms some of which we have worked with the authors have worked with have begun to make the shift yeah. so of course these things which we are talking about it's not that companies have have mastered them and things have taken over no it's slow slowly companies are thinking about it thinking about it slowly and one step at a time yeah they are working on these type of things so the shift has begun yeah 
so that is why it is very important that you also take you also have some type of shift in your learning that okay i am learning what i am learning in in the university but it need to shift so what do i need to do so that you need to do in fact in a recent study we looked at more than 350 traditional enterprises in both service and manufacturing sectors and found that the majority had started building a greater focus on data and analytics into their organization so why what is stopping you in doing a course in data and analytics what is the problem why you don't want to become some expert in data analytics and once you have some expertise it's not going to happen that you will not find a job in jamaica this is if if become data analyst and an analytic expert and send your cv to company in any department in marketing data analytics is required in finance it is required in operation in supply chain in procurement in purchasing anything is required so you you would have you would wh what why do you think that when people have bachelors in marketing and they they send their cv to companies and uh, they don't they are not shortlisted why do you think that happens already now i'm talking about now and earlier years now like i'm sure you are familiar with your friends or you know you who graduated and don't have a job why do you think that happen they have a bachelor's degree in marketing they should be given a job in marketing they have a bachelor's degree in hr because the shift has already already that is it the shift has begun from couple of years now yeah but the problem is that the curriculum course content did not shift course content is same which was 10 years ago yeah. so look at any course pick up any course and go to book uh, go to uh, library and ask for 10 years uh, 10 years uh, past papers ask for 10 years past papers and see how the questions are same again and again repeat same type of questions how that how how that is preparing anyone for job market how <laughs> yeah so the the so the 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 courses have not shifted but the market has shifted so in that the student who graduates the students is not ready because they did not do any course on that and it many don't even know excel yeah so um these are some very like we are ending our semester today these are something which you really need to think about instead of thinking about your mcqs which are going to come in the final exam yes they are important yes but they are neither here nor there they are not preparing you for for anything if you ask me what what is what are they doing is just it is sad but i cannot give you mcqs like from outside the outside the uh, syllabus or like i can't modernize them <laughs> yeah so um please think about these things is very important is very important other otherwise when you will graduate you will very likely will face difficulties in the in the market so now is the time to you know uh see what can be done anyways many including a not not strong vodafone comcast visa had already made important inroads digitizing and uh, redesigning key components of their operating models and developing sophisticated data platforms and ai capabilities yeah very interesting and because i was talking about local market so 
you might think that oh is just you know big countries have these things so um mastercard and you guys must be familiar that mastercard uh, came to jamaica it's here yeah, mastercard caribbean and they have uh, they have some they have started business in jamaica so type artificial intelligence because i am discussing this so that's why i'm typing it okay okay here it is this is a website of 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 mastercard mastercard services and look at this ai in banking implementing buzzword tech They're doing something it's their website newsroom mastercard mastercard rolls out ai across its network 2016 <laughs> 2016 which year is this how many years five years ago the mastercard jamaica is here so what do you think when you are going to apply for a job in mastercard if you are going to apply for like some very regular job then maybe it is but you don't want to be want to like have good career so what do you think what skill set they are would be looking for mastercard jamaica what do you think yeah So this this is it's very scary also in the see when I start talking about these things my whole then uh, you know I think let let's come back to here <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to be a software startup to digitize critical elements of your business but you do have to confront silos and um, add add capabilities and retool your culture yeah so let's look at some example okay here it is to take on amazon so we spoke about amazon walmart and those so see what 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 is happening here walmart is building its operating models model around ai and replacing traditional enterprise software system with an integrated cloud-based architecture that will allow Walmart to use its unique data assets in a variety of powerful new applications and automate or enhance a growing number of operating tasks with AI and analytics. At Microsoft, CEO Satya is betting the company's future on a wholesale transformation of its operating model. They just mentioned one line, but now it's if you are interested, you run some searches. Listen to the interview of CEO Satya Nadella. Yeah, and see what type of transformation he's he's talking about. What are they doing? Uh, learn like you know, learn about like a day on a life of you know top CEO. What do they do in in a day? What are the activities they do? They these, these are questions which the people ask them in the interviews. Like they would ask, ask him, how, what is your typical day? What do you do in a, in a day? What time you wake up? What is the next thing? What are the meetings like? What are the things you are focusing on? How you want to compete in next uh, three year, four year and, and, and so on. What is, what is, what is happening? So these are some good knowledge to have and not just have that then uh, do something uh, about about that so rethinking strategy and capabilities that is I think um, very important in the context of what we discussed organizations uh, that excel at connecting businesses aggregating the data that flows among them and extracting its value through analytics and AI will have the upper hand so you want to have upper hand you need to think about these things you can see this dynamic in companies like Google, Facebook, Tencent, and Alibaba, which have become powerful hub firms by accumulating data through their many network connections and building the algorithm necessary to heighten competitive advantage across disparate industries. Very interesting. Accumulating data through their many network connections. Yeah. What is that many network? Uh, you see uh, they have the same people have 
these uh, they are buying other uh, platforms like whatsapp whatsapp is standalone but who owns it which company did i lose internet yeah which company um, whatsapp i think is um, managed by facebook so the data going in whatsapp um, is going indirectly to facebook and this is how they are they are doing accumulating data through their many network connections who owns uh, instagram where is that data going so you will find out these are five six seven eight ten companies which are across the globe they are into different 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 and then it's very easy for them to start new businesses like see how amazon is growing new business new business new business why how that is possible that is possible because they have the data now and the consumer has to do other things also so they will they will see what other thing the consumer wants in the market so they will start that business also then they will start next business also next business also they are looking at customers because they have the data they have they know what customers are talking about what they are thinking about and and so on better than better than the customer knows yeah this is this is debatable but and i would also say don't get influenced by what i am saying you think about these things in your own time these are just ideas or the way i think you don't have to agree with these things you will now after the session you see what makes sense to you and then see but at least couple of things should make sense to you and then you take some action on on that don't have to agree with all the things meanwhile conventional approach to strategy that focus on traditional industry analysis are becoming increasingly ineffective take automotive companies they are facing a variety of new digital threats from uber to waymo each coming from outside traditional industry boundaries this is very interesting very important each coming from outside industry boundaries so it is not that you are in this industry so you are going to stay in that industry what is the industry amazon is in which industry are they they are into so many different things yeah. but if auto executives think of cars beyond their traditional industry context as a highly connected ai enabled service they cannot only defend themselves selves, but also unleash new value through local commerce opportunities ads news and entertainment feeds location based services and so on and you are, you are familiar with these type of things they do you know advertise you and send things in your email and those type of things the advice to executives was once to stick with businesses they they knew in industries they understood so stick with businesses they knew so this was the advice to executives was once once upon a time this was the advice yeah, yeah. just you know just this article is written by harvard university professors both are professors not lecturers professors at Harvard Business School, yeah, you can, you should read who who are the writers of this this article. Yeah. This person has advised Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon. These companies took advice from this professor who has written this article. This professor has written this book competing in the age of AI. Yeah. So you can't take, you can, although I did say that you take what you want and you don't have to agree with everything, but you can't just disregard what they are saying. Maybe that's not a good idea. But synergies in algorithm and data flows do not respect industry boundaries and organizations that cannot leverage custom customers and 
data across those boundaries are likely to be at a big disadvantage. So, and international businesses are just, just like that. They have, it's not one business they are in. They are diversified products. They are in diversified markets, diversified data they are collecting from different markets, different type of you know, stakeholders are involved. So uh, this is very important, very important, I think, very important. Instead of focusing on industry analysis and on the management of companies, internal resources, strategy needs to focus on the connections firms create across industries and the flow of data through the networks the firm firms use reflect on it all this has major implications for organizations and their employees machine learning will transform the nature of almost every job regardless of occupation income level or specialization undoubtedly AI based operating models can exact a real human toll. Several studies suggest that perhaps half of current work activities may be replaced by AI enabled systems. Half of current work activities. So whatever you want to become in next five, six, seven years, please read on that. Will that be part of some activity or will be taken over we should not be too surprised by that after all operating models have long been designed to make many tasks predictable and repeatable processes for scanning products at checkout making lattes and removing hernias for instant instance benefit from standardization and don't require too much human creativity any any job which don't require too much of human creativity what is going to happen to that job they are talking about removing hernias it's like a doctor do that but they are saying it does these are making lattes products at well this is already ha happening scanning products at checkouts like they are already being checked out like automatically and the model amazon i think gave for grocery store where you go in the grocery store and you just pick up the product and it just scans automatically like it you pay from your credit card automatically and there you go you walk in and you go out of the of the of the market anyone knows what is the name of that that concept i think it's amazon some grocery smart grocery store or something yeah I'm forgetting the name while AI improvements will enrich many jobs and generate a variety of interesting opportunities it seems inevitable that they will also cause widespread dislocation in many occupations yeah self checkout yes thanks Alana self checkout the dislocations will include not only job placement but also the erosion of traditional capabilities in almost every setting ai powered firms are taking on highly specialized organizations in an ai driven world the requirements for competition have less to do with specialization and more to do with a universal set of capabilities in data sourcing processing analytics and algorithm development so again you know they are talking about these skills so please pay attention to them these new universal capabilities are reshaping strategy business design and even leadership strategies in very diverse digital and network businesses now look similar as do the drivers of operating performance industry ex expert expertise has become less critical yeah. why why is that become less critical great example is this great example when uber looked for a new ceo the board hired someone who had previously run a digital firm expedia 
not a limousine service company. When you are hiring for Uber, although it is linked with cars and those type of things, when they hired, they hired the person who had experience with running a digital firm. Why? Why? Because it is the data. If you can work with data, you're going to find job across disciplines, across disciplines. You want to work in university, you learn, you learn data. You'll find a job, very good job in university setting across the world. Yeah. You, you will find a better job than someone who is a lecturer if you are good with data. Yeah. Any industry, you name it. Same will happen with the degrees, I think. Like it won't be bachelors in business administration anymore. What is the usefulness of that degree, by the way? It does not, what, what does it teach you? A bachelors in business administration, what skills do you come up with at the end of the degree? I should not be saying these things in the, especially in the recording sessions, but uh, I'm going to uh, no problem. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that is the degree is not the degree which is going to be useful in the future. It will be the skill set. Degree is important, of course. Like you went to school, you went to college. It has its own importance. Uh, not saying that don't have any degree, but it's just the start. It's just the degree alone is not the thing. It's the is that they are going to because this is the example uber is not hiring someone from limousine service company they are hiring people the ceo chief is from a digital firm expedia so what expedia has to do with uber nothing if you think expedia is different uber is different expedia is doing different things uber is doing different things but both has big similarities both are run on data both depend on data evaluations to a big degree. So then I think it would be your skill set, like you develop some skills which are, and if you are not interested in data, that is fine also. Not everyone needs to become data scientist. But some type of skill set, I think, is extremely important. I hope I made myself clear and you will think about these things. We are moving from an era of core competencies that differ from industry to industry to an age shaped by data and analytics and powered by algorithm, all hosted in the cloud for anyone to use. This is why Alibaba and Amazon are able to compete in industries as disparate as retail and financial services and healthcare and credit scoring. They are in different industries, different, 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 different industries. Why? How? We just spoke about it a while ago. These sectors now have many similar technological foundations and employ common methods and tools. Strategies are shifting away from traditional different differentiation based on cost, quality and brand equity and specialization, specialized vertical expertise. And where are they going towards? advantages like business network position the accumulation of unique data and the development of sophisticated analytics and this line is i think is important because you know they you study in your in your classes i think that the business is competing on cost quality and so on but these harvard professors are saying strategies are shifting away from traditional differentiation based on cost, quality, and brand equity. But if you are, are having some you know, difficulty in, in what they are saying, you will have to read more, I think. You will have to read more. And this is just start, you know, I'm just sensitizing you with this type of content. Um, you don't have to worry about these things. Um, for your final exam. I will clarify in the in the end after the article. 
a digital signal of a viral meme for instance can spread also the challenge what what is the what is the challenge now challenges are pretty obvious i'm sure you have many challenges are coming in your mind when you are thinking about all these and let's look at look at maybe one of them a digital signal and a viral meme for instance can spread rapidly through networks and can be just about impossible to halt even for the organization that launched it in the first place or an entity that controls the key hubs in a network without friction a video inciting violence or a phony or manipulative headline can quickly spread to billions of people on a variety of networks even morphing to optimize click throughs and downloads and you know the, these things you know you are you use social media you see how things uh, move how fast if you have a message to send ai offers a fantastic way to reach vast numbers of people and personalize that message for them but the marketers paradise can be a citizens nightmare and you have seen it in other examples like you know politics how the uh, elections were managed in recent times in even in developed countries and you know what was happening you can read on that risks can be greatly magnified consider the way that digital banks are aggregating consumer savings in an unprecedented fashion and financial which now operates one of the largest money market funds in the world is interested with the savings of hundreds of millions of chinese consumers the risks that presents are significant especially for a relatively unproven institution then you know the risks are there you know, any any skill set which you can develop to mitigate these type of risks it won't be hard for you to uh, get employment in international markets wherever you would want to go if you have the skill set Uh, especially in the future it will become more it is difficult for people to cross boundaries if they don't have the skill set if they have the skill set it's it's not hard because countries want people who have these skills that countries want them so they are going to invite invite you uh, won't be difficult for you if you will develop skills on on these lines digital scale scope and learning creates a slew of new challenges not just privacy and cyber security problems but social turbulence resulting from market concentration dislocation and increased inequality yeah. so far so let's say you are not interested in data and these type of things no problem you don't have to be interested in those things are you interested in making things equal you are worried about increased inequality build some skills in that how an international business can ensure equality um through the things they are doing through the product services they are offering how equality can be improved through their marketing campaigns through their advertisements through their products in themselves uh, and i'm sure you have seen many advertisements which you know promote some type of you know some type of uh, behaviors um, so you can you can become some type of expert in that field the institutions designed to keep an eye on business regulatory bodies for example are struggling to keep up with all the rapid change you can make a career in this why not you know the institutions designed to keep an eye on businesses regulatory bodies they are in every country they are struggling to keep up with all the rapid change just like universities are struggling to update their course content it is not updated it is old many times it is redundant many times it is good to read it 
but it could have been improved that is what i am saying so because the change is very fast it's dynamic new things are coming in so you can build a career in this like in other words they, they are not at par with the advancement so the rate with which technologies are improving and the rate with which businesses are embracing those technologies that rate is way higher than if you compare it with these regularly regulatory bodies their ability to understand it like you know that there are ethical issues there are legal issues law requirements social issues society problems these these things create in society those are those are real challenges and you would see that you know these are like these are such big challenges that you know countries are not ready even human beings are not ready to like when we are on internet and we are online and we are on social media platform and you are just using it using it using it using it and in the night you are using it using it using it and uh, you're not sleeping and just you know you are just scrolling it's a scrolling function you just keep on scrolling on the thing it just the feed never ends you scroll and then next will come you are on instagram you are like you like a picture similar pictures are going to come why they are coming they are they are coming to keep you interested they are why to make you interested so that you don't leave their platform when you are on instagram you keep on doing that keep on doing that keep on doing that when you are on tiktok you are keep on you like whatever you like they are going to give you similar tiktok so you will like the next one and next one and before you know one hour two hour three hour all night is wasted on that but if you understand the algorithm that this is what is happening with you they are playing with your mind they are showing you the thing what they are what they show you on instagram what comes on your instagram feed is very different from what i what comes for me what comes from for other person because they are giving you targeting you with the same thing. and they are learning the more time you will spend on these platform the better they will know because you have interacted more so then their recommendation is just going to improve and improve and improve and improve and improve so that is why you need to have the, at least what you should do after you know after this article is log off from your these type of mediums log off they are not always there yeah when you want to use it, you log in and you see what you want to see, but don't continue seeing. You have seen what you came there for and you log, log out. But human beings generally don't do that. Why? Because we are not ready for the technology which, which is there. It's why human mind just get involved in it and then waste a lot of time in, 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 that, in that activity without even knowing. You get involved. It, that is that they are doing their job to involve you as a consumer so you spend more time this is their job yeah but humans are not ready for that yeah. so how what are the social and economic and these are businesses these are international businesses instagram is is international business is a modern international business tiktok is a modern international business these are the type of businesses which are going to <laughs> not for your like you won't say it in your exam of course if it were some essay or something you won't maybe say that because technically you have to define what is international business and so on but in layman's term these are the modern international businesses which have crossed boundaries and with regulatory bodies and these type of like why these things they get banned then right for example, we are talking about TikTok. TikTok uh, banned, banned in country. Countries banned. Yeah. 
okay the indian government has banned yeah list of in which countries tiktok is banned indonesia india and i'm sure there are more also and these are the countries where tiktok has been downloaded downloaded the most okay download there has to be ah uh, this is very interesting how to use tiktok in countries that banned it we are always thinking about uh, yeah here it is other countries indonesia bangladesh armenia pakistan even china is originating from china but china banned the tiktok app due to foreign content yeah very interesting so why these things get banned why why because the regulatory frameworks are they are not ready they are struggling to keep up with all the rapid changes and it is impacting their societies and all of those things yeah so of course you can argue that you know it should be the um, the um, what do you call it uh, freedom of speech and uh, you know uh, there should not be restrictions and those type that is that is different debate uh, i understand that sentiment but what we are trying to say is that the advancement in these technologies is so much that even sometimes the countries would ban it why because they cannot manage it for one reason or another it can be any reason it can be that it is impacting their society or they are, whatever the reason is but if you will look deep it will be linked with management they could not manage the manage the what is coming from that uh, from that media if if you are spending too much time on tiktok or any other app like this it is essentially it is managed we we, are, we could not manage our you know our emotions we are just the happiness we are getting happiness happiness and then whenever we need more that type of happiness then we will go back to it and uh, so on so how you can how as a in terms of building your career how you can uh, help these regular regulatory bodies to understand these type of application these are wonderful area to uh, look at and across the globe there are uh, uh, like for example for example um, advertisement is, uh, is uh, businesses are using these type of platforms to advertise so in the traditional model uh, people would advertise using gleaner and observer and uh, rjr and what not right local let's talk about jamaica so what would be the future of advertising it's already coming people are advertising using youtube and using other type of you, you are familiar with that right so that when you are advertising through those mediums you your revenue as a jamaican business your revenue is going in the internet international market so it is not coming in the local market yes consumer will come if they like your product or they like the advertisement but the money is you are paying to international market so should not be there some type of regulation that even when jamaican businesses are marketing using these type of international apps some payment should also go to government of jamaica also because it is jamaican money but it is going outside yeah so this is maybe one area which is not maybe maybe regulated too much as we speak maybe that is the case we need to find out the details like what happens in those type of situations but if not this you will find many things which where the regulation is not still there yeah. so you can work in the in that in that area that can be very very fascinating 
as an AI driven world, once an offering fits with the market is ensured, user numbers, engagement and revenue can skyrocket. It just skyrocket just like you keep on scrolling on Instagram. You keep on scrolling because you can't can't leave the app. Yeah. Same way, same way, um, the revenues are going to skyrocket. Same way. Very very interesting. Yet it is increasingly obvious that unconstrained growth is dangerous. It's dangerous. And we try to reflect on some of the dangers, but there are many things which you can think about. The potential for businesses that embrace digital operating models is huge, but the capacity to inflict widespread harm needs to be explicitly considered. And these are harm, harmful impacts of, uh, you know, uh, there is this, you and me love, you know, we love these type of platforms and we spend a lot of time. I also spend a lot of time. I should not, but I do. So, but these are harmful, uh, harmful effects. At least, you know, the time is to realize it and then eventually we will maybe cut off. Uh, one thing which I do is that I log off from the, from the app. I don't and I don't keep internet on on my phone. It is it is it is off. I will turn it on when I want to see and then look at what I need to see and then turn it off. <laughs> that is what I do. But still, there must be better way to manage it. But you know, I'm I'm learning. We are learning together how to how to stay away from the widespread harm and so on. Navigating these opportunities and threats will be a real test of leadership for both businesses and public institutions and, you know, anything you can think about and international businesses and so on. And these are some challenges and things which uh, I hope you're going to reflect on them. There are many things which I skipped in the article. There were examples, very interesting examples like you know, Microsoft AI transformation. You can uh, read this uh, Microsoft AI transformation. Um, you will learn a thing or two. And uh, other thing, but before I conclude, I would, would like to conclude on this maybe. Yeah, putting AI at the firm's core, your international business or your business or whatever you want to do what are the core things you might want to uh, think about and with this we will finalize our engagement for today so there are five principles that should guide transformation of course there are many things but we are highlighting five things here so you can think about that number one is one strategy one strategy On our side note, University of West Indies is working on making making it one UV, one UV. So because they have campuses, four or five different campuses, so they are working on one UV. So one strategy. And especially, you know, you can think about in the context of international businesses, like you know how difficult it is to you know create uh, one oneness. When you have different, different, different segments, how to create one this is a very big challenge. Um, so that this this challenge, this challenging and time-consuming undertaking demands focus and a consistent top-down mandate to coordinate and inspire the many bottom-up efforts involved. Uh, this is a big challenge. So this would be number one. Number two, a clear architecture. Yeah clear architecture, for example, centralization and a lot of consistency. So when you are building the models or whatever you are doing in your businesses, you want to see how, how to centralize, centralize it, uh, how to make things consistent, create harmony uh, in anything, in data or otherwise. 
um, for example standards for when and how to store it so that it can be used and reused by multiple parties they are talking about data standards for when and how to store data so that it can be used and reused by multiple parties number two number three the right capabilities and that is where i was talking about your career and you know what skills you need to maybe think about and so on so that is number three here uh, so many organizations fail to realize that they need to systematically hire a very different kind of talent and set up career paths and incentive systems for those employees. So many organizations fail to realize this. Systematically hire a very different kind of talent a different kind of talent as an international business hr for example you need to hire a very different type of talent who is thinking about these things so in the interview they ask you you know what do you do you like reading yes i do what have you read tell us the last book you read about what was that book about why did you like it you're going to ask you these type of questions now how are you going to which book you are going to talk about which book have you had and how are you going to link it with your your like some modern thinking in that book or something which yeah. they are asking for a different kind of talent what talent they are looking for that is the question you want to think about at this company i want to you know get job in what 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 type of people they how should I prepare myself now so next five years I have those things which this company is going to ask for yeah, so that is why very important to do different type of activities uh, during your uh, uh, I think I was talking with George uh, in last session after everyone left and we were talking about same things like you know she was um, she was saying that she is um, uh, doing many different things and seeing you know how how that is so I think that is good thing to uh, do um, number four an agile uh, product focus yeah, very interesting taking traditional processes and transforming them into softwares algorithms traditional processes it will be traditional thing it's not that you are doing something new but you are just doing it differently amazon uh, store they are they are they are still selling they are they are selling but they are selling differently people are buying people are still buying they will continue to buy but they are buying differently so that is what transformation so at least this if you can be creative and think of some new way that would be excellent that would be excellent like uber thought yeah uh, uh, alano what is the name of that uh, that that business which gives which rents out uh, different properties you gave the name the other day my god Airbnb, yes, yeah, Airbnb. But thanks, Alan. What is what Airbnb is doing? Is that is it doing the same thing which companies were doing before? Hotels were doing, but they are doing it differently. Yeah. So if you can think think about that, that would be nice. But otherwise, taking traditional processes and transforming them into software that that should be that should be nice. I I really need to think how how I can <laughs> what when Alano is no more <laughs> in my sessions, how I'm going to remember the name Airbnb. I need to maybe make a tattoo or something like that. Should have a deep understanding of use cases they are enabling. Deep understanding. Yeah. Use cases or user cases. And finally, 
Number five, extremely important, very important. Multidiscipline governance, interdiscipline governance, multidiscipline calls for well thought out collaboration across disparate disciplines and functions. You need to think about that. Yeah. Very important. So that's possible with, you know, the, the widely read on different topics. That would be very important. And of course, deep thinking about legal and ethical challenges. Um, We spoke about that also in our discussion. Yeah, deep thinking about legal and ethical challenge. These are some things which you might want to reflect on as you take journey on uh, international businesses competing in the age of AI. You want to compete internationally. Personally speaking, as an individual in terms of your career or in terms of business, making your business in the true sense of international businesses, these things which we just try to uh, highlight, they are a good starting point. But all these articles which we discussed, they are just starting points. These are, so you need to now select your own uh, preference on different things and then see oh, in which areas you want to hone your skills. And uh, over a period of time, you will develop some expertise and uh, in the next five, six, seven years. Uh, things will be better for all of us. With that, we can close. Thank you.